I'm John Miglos for the Wisconsin DMA and the International Society for Strategic Marketing. Look it up, ISSM.org, WDMA.org. Long time. We, we, we began at the very beginning of the Internet. Okay, you now I'll close this up. I see you out there. There we go. Woohoo! Okay, so let's dive into the news, all the news that's not fit to talk about. Okay, the first thing we want to talk about is this is a tiger that was created in World War II, and it could mean the Swedish tiger, but it could also mean the silent, the silent tiger. And it was created back in World War II, but um, the Swedes came up with a different alternative, which is this. And, you know, if you know anything about raccoons, this is to encourage people to wash their hands. Raccoons wash their food and wash their hands, right? And so, and that's actually called, in Swedish, it's called a wash bear. That's what they call a raccoon. So somebody decided that this and this are copyright infringements. And I don't know. I suppose they should have turned the raccoon different or something. They could have put, you know, if they would have just flipped it, they would have been better off. Uh, it would have been harder to say it was copyright infringement. Um, or just do the head. No, you got to do at least half of it. Anyway, so that's what's happening in the world today. You can't have any fun. Actually, what happened was that when this, when the tiger went off copyright, um, or when, when the, when the artist or whoever created it, whoever owned the, the, the copyright died, it went to a museum. And because the Swedish army was still using it on post-it notes and stuff, they sued them and got 70, 700,000 krona or whatever it is. Um, so anyway. You know, watch your copyright. Copyrights are much more valuable than than uh, patents because patents expire in 17 years. Copyrights go forever, it seems like. They can be tweaked forever. Okay, and on that note, let's go over here to, let's go over here to the PDF. Disney launches a free website called Disney Magic Moments. See that? Disney Magic Moments. Uh, it includes videos, not full movies, stories, activities from Walt Disney Animation Studios, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars. Woohoo, boy, do they have franchises here. And National Geographic. That's like four of the top franchises in the world. So you can get some more content if you're running out of Netflix, which we are. We're going back. <laughs> My wife said this morning, what about, I don't remember what she asked about, but it was like something on VHS that we have. We probably still have the the tape, but I don't know if we have any players. We got to convert those VHSs, she said. <laughs> Does she realize what kind of resolution they are? Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'll be probably working on that later today. Okay. 87% of consumers prefer stores with touchless checkout. Now, I wasn't 100% sure what touchless checkout is because, you know, I know that at Walmart and at Pick and Save or someplace, they have these things where you can take the bag and sort of put the items, uh, uh, scan them yourself, but I'm touching them. You know, I saw a comedian say, we, we hear about automation where the machines are going to do the work for us. These machines aren't doing any work for us. We're doing the work for us now. That's why I think about the checkout line. You know, it used to be you hand your credit card to the checkout person and they would take care of it. Now it faces you. you got to put it in. What do you mean I got to put it in? What are you doing here? <laughs> you know, I mean, really. The only thing, they got a screen between you and the scanner, so I guess you can scan. So I think this is talking about the scanner, but there was another mention of um, robust self-checkout options. And I think that's the kind of stuff where with the Amazon little convenience stores, you could pick up something and have your near near field I think that's what they call it, near field uh, credit card in your pocket and just walk out with it and it would know what you had and what, uh, how you paid. Not sure. But, it's, but it was interesting to me, this is why I brought the article to your attention, 70% of shoppers are using touchless self-checkout, 29% are shopping online. So back, you know, it's a little bit like back in the day, you know, back in the day, uh, only about half of American households had credit cards back in the 80s. And 
only 65% in upper Wisconsin in the uh, or in the UP have credit cards. <laughs> They're off grid up there. Um, and so we used to basically only rent um, only rent what we called response lists, which were people who had bought something online and didn't really count didn't really count uh, home shopping network. We didn't really count subscriptions to magazines. There was a lot of things that you would buy online, but it wasn't like buying on, buying an, a, a product. So we would only rent those because half of America didn't do it. Well, it seems like there's still some reluctance to shop online. Uh, maybe that's just groceries because I haven't ever bought groceries online. Um, Target's shipped workers. Target has a deal with this company called Shipped, which is which is based in Iowa. Okay, and it's kind of like temporary. It's, you know, the, you get it's a little bit like an Uber driver. You get so much per trip. You you're you're paid to go get an order, go into Target, find the stuff, come out, put it in your car, drive it to some place, drop it off. That's okay. And they were paying people a five dollar per order, and then um, in addition. Let's go down here and see how it worked. In addition, 7.5% of the t total store receipt. But, you know, depending on how many items you're, you're getting, you know, this is one of those that's going to have to find its natural balance, sort of like Uber did, you know, where it, it, in the very beginning the drivers did pretty well, and then they got more and more drivers, um, and... Uh, they didn't do as well and so then they had to you know it has to find its natural balance people have to decide if it's worthwhile or not and um so in this case the shipped the shipped workers are saying it's not worth it and you know it may not be but with 10 million people filing unemployment last week um there's probably going to be plenty of shipped drivers around if you need them I uh, talked to my cousin yesterday and he said that he had started doing Uber Eats and it was safer he thought than it was to do um, picking up people and having them in your car but even then he said that some restaurants the people all have masks and gloves and they bring it out to you some restaurants you go in you have to touch the door you have to you know and they're just looking normal in there so you know, again, it's got to find its natural balance. Things are in flux, and that's the way the market adjusts to things. Okay, esports coverage is increasing. Media viewing is up as high as Nielsen says, 60%. It gives esports an opportunity to fill the void. Uh, people are playing more, but more than that, people are playing more games competitively. Um, the 2018 World Championship Finals for the game League of Legends drew an estimated audience of 100 million more than the Super Bowl but esports are still a relatively n n new niche in the West never know how to say that um, the problem they've got is they need they need the sports legends to play each other you know even if it's with the help of a of a good player you know we don't have to know who's exactly running it but what we'd like to do is have sports legends talking in the background or something much like this year's Super Bowl where Brett Favre uh, Drew Brees and Joe Montana were watching the game together on the couch the big screen you couldn't see the, the game but you know you could have it on another so I had it on my computer I had these three legends talking about the game telling goofy stories and stuff it was actually way better than the, the game itself and so I don't even remember who was playing but I remember th these guys talking you gotta connect that up and I, I did uh, contact a sports legend in my neighborhood, and he thought that was a good idea, but he wasn't very good at these games. And I said, well, that isn't the, that isn't the point. But I did hear, incidentally, that UFC is gonna, is, has scheduled a, uh, a, a, uh, a fight night um, on Indian land, so they don't have to necessarily listen to the federal government, and no audience, and testing beforehand and all that. So at least we'll get some uh, MMA. You know, way to go, UFC. I think you should do it every night. <laughs> There's nothing else to watch. You could make big gains. You know, I don't think you can do it every night. But you could do it, you know. Yeah, you could do it. You probably could. I don't know. Go for it, Dana.
Okay, Amazon's going to delay Prime Day, I guess, because, you know, it overwhelms the, the delivery service anyway. And right now, delivery service is stretched. So, and it makes no sense if Amazon has more orders than they can fill to try to do Amazon Prime Day now. Okay, uh, the opportunity is there for VR, but will brands finally embrace VR in lockdown? My guess is no. And the reason is that until uh, babies are born with VR headsets on and used to that stuff, it's just, you know, I tried it. Uh, I've, I regularly, every now and then, try it. I, I, I got, or I get, you know, another hood or something that goes with a phone or try somebody else. I tried a, a fancy one, a really good one with a fighter jet, and it was disorienting. It was, you know, vertigo, seasickness, and the whole bit. Um, so that said, it takes, there's, there's not just a learning curve. There is a big hurdle, and uh, the guy told me it would do that. But it was fun. I mean, I, I took the jet off, and he said, whoa, you did great. Well, yeah, I know something about flying simulations. But um, when I did the barrel rolls and stuff, it was spooky, man. Anyway, one last thing, see if I can get this to work. Uh, here's a tip. If you do need to go out, uh, this fella, you know, I, I, I give him credit. We don't have a lot of these jugs in America. Find a jug that's bigger than your head. That's one of the principles. Um, milk, a milk carton might work pretty well, if you ask me. A one-gallon milk carton? I, I, I may have to try that out. But, you know, if it smells of old milk, that would be bad. Soda would be better. Bottled water, best. Um and one of the things that I, I saw a video on airflow out of masks and, you know, if you want to, if you keep the air in, in proximity to your face, your own air in proximity to your own face, it's a lot better than if you're breathing out because uh, it does go a distance. And so I give this guy credit. Um, it's a way to recycle plastics, keep them out of the ocean. And um, I don't know the comfort level, but... One thing I know is the masks, you know, affect my ears and my neck and everything gets tense when I wear those little elastic masks. So this is an alternative, great alternative. You heard it here first, probably. Have a great day. Keep safe. Like and share. Bye-bye.